So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. You know that we have been transitioning Tizzy to barefoot with the help of the Kevin Bacon's hoof formula. Her hooves are in really good condition, but she has been shod all her life. So I wanted to try boot some go and I got some expert help in from Rachel and you're from the hoof boot shop and you go all over the UK do, yes. fitting boots in different um, styles and sizes and there's so many different things that I really wanted to get someone who knew what they were doing to give Tizzy the best chance of boots working out for her you also do virtual assessments don't you so yes, how do they work right. so the um, the customer will send me photos and measurements of the horse um, by the horse's feet and I want the whole horse as well to do so I got you know a general idea of how the angles sit how the pattern sit and then I advise online um, through Facebook Messenger or email um, what I think which boots would be most suitable for that horse, you know, what the discipline they do. Um, I then post them out, the um, customer then tries them and normally it's very, very successful. And she also ships worldwide, so for those of you watching from the US, Australia or wherever, you can also use the service. So we've got this massive hoof boot kit of different um, types of boot to see what's going to suit Tizzy best, find the size, find the type and hopefully get some expert advice on fitting them, what I'm meant to care for them, what I'm going to do with them because I know absolutely nothing about <laughs> boots. <laughs> Let's get started. And we are now going to start the process of measuring up to see which boots will be right for her. Okay, so for my virtual assessments, um, I like people to take a measurement, it would be the length of the whole sole, so right down the middle, through the middle of the frog, into the heel bulbs. So here Tizzy I would say is about 14 centimetres. And then do it the opposite way, measure the width. So you want to be in approximately the, exactly the centre of the foot, which I'd say is about here. And she's bang on 11 centimetres. So obviously I brought Tizzy in and I kind of prepared her as well as I thought I should so I made sure her legs were dry, her hooves were nice and clean and I picked everything out. Is there anything in particular that you want the hooves to be prepared before you come and see them? So on my visits I like the hooves to look exactly like them. <laughs> These are absolutely perfect, we've got no, no mud, no wet. Um, it just really really keeps the, like, the fit kits clean, you can get an accurate, um, accurate measurement um, and you know you can really see exactly where the angles are of the feet. And if the hooves were wet, so say you don't have hard standing at your yard, mm -hmm. does that make a difference to the fit of the boot? No, it doesn't make a difference to the fit of the boot. It just kind of makes my job just that okay. little bit more difficult. So it's but possible it is possible if you prime me with like chocolate or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So now you've measured. What happens next? So now, so that'll be for the virtual assessment. Um, that'll be online. Um, normally when I come to fit an actual horse I use all my fit kits. Um, I have been doing this for quite a while so I do kind of know so what fits. Rachel has <laughs> actually picked out three from her massive bag that she thinks will fit Tizzy. So let's put you on the spot. Let me give you the three and let's okay. see if they fit. So we haven't tried them yet. <laughs> so, and I've only just measured her feet as well. This was actually before I did measure them. Okay, so this one is... So this is the Flex 115. This is a new size that's only recently come out. Um, so we'll have a look at this one, see how this fits first. So. And what are you looking for when you're putting the boot on? So what? with the Flex boots, so you want them to come on, you want to put them nicely at the toe, and they go on like this. Make a good, sometimes give them a little tap. And then you don't want, you can have a little bit of movement in them, but you don't want them slipping and sliding around everywhere. So I think that feels quite secure. And it's up, for, up far enough to offer the support that the boot needs to give. You put the foot down, that's it. And then I, what I do first, I look at the front of the foot, you don't want any gapping here so you can almost get like a bit of a nail down all the way around but you don't want them too loose or too big that'd be absolutely perfect there then you don't want any gapping back here either so you can there's a lab for a little tiny bit of room and a little bit of movement and you want the back of the flex boot to be in line with the back of the heel so i say this fit is absolutely perfect so the flex boot 
fit pretty perfectly. So one out of three so far. <laughs> Let's see if we get two out of three. So this one is... That's the equine fusion. Okay, so let's see if this one fits. Yeah, that's absolutely bang on perfect. So with the equine fusion, with the sole, you just want to be able to feel the outside just touching the hoof all the way around. You just want it to be able to slip on like this, slip on nicely, and then you can have a tiny, tiny bit of movement again, like that. That fits absolutely perfect on her. And that's the 12 slim in the equine fusion. Okay, so that's two out of three. Will it be three out of three? So this is the <laughs> scoop boot. That's the scoop no, I've boot. I've actually this yeah. is the only one I've seen quite a few of. So because there's quite a few endurance riders in the UK that use these. Okay. Um, I mainly notice them because they have those coloured tabs across yeah. the front. So <laughs> let's see if this one fits. Right. Okay, so this one. Once you you base it on, so you put the fit kit on. And you just want to make sure they're comfortable around the heel bulbs. They've got a bit of movement there. Just just about fit a finger under, and it sits nice and level and central here. And then, so the scoot boot, um, they do up at the front. So as soon as they're done up, they then sit like that. So then you also, same with the flex boot. You just want to be able to get a bit of a nail down there. You don't want any whole finger. You don't want to see any gapping either. So I'll say this one, when the actual scoot bit is done up properly, will be absolutely perfect. What do you think? Hey? Tizzy obviously can't tell me her favourite, but based on the boots on her, mm -hmm. your experience and things, what would you say is the boot I should use and what's your favourite boot? Okay, so the in, I would say the scoot boot is probably the most endurance tested out of the out of all three. Yeah. And um, there's lots of people that do use uh, these worldwide. So the scoot boot really is the one that is tried and tested and people have got lots of miles out of. Yes. Yeah. I'd say that one's probably used more than any others at the moment in endurance. Um, so the flex boot actually came out um, in April this year. Um, they are from Finland. I personally use it on my own horse and I've probably done about 150, 200 miles in total in them. Um, I think they're absolutely fantastic boots, the way they move, they move the horse. Um, and then, so they're probably my favourite. Okay, so I've noticed as well actually, they're probably the most flexible feeling. Like these all flex, but to me this is the softest material yeah, of the definitely. three. Um, are the boots themselves made out of the same material as the fit kits? Yes, so, okay, so cool. the flex and the scooter, yeah. and then these will be the soles for, so these are like jogging shoes, so okay. these will be the soles for the equine fusion. The equine fusion just have a bit more material okay. that comes up around the pasture. Shall we go have a look at the actual boots then? Yeah. So we've got the actual boots out of the car now, are these all in Tizzy's size? Uh, they're, no, they're not actually. Oh, okay, that's why we're not putting yeah. them on there anyway, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the first <laughs> um, So, what have I got here? So that's the Equine Fusion Active Jogging Shoe. That actually looks like a trainer. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I've got... That's the Flex Boot. Okay, I really like the feel of this actually. And yeah. what have you got? So this is the Equine Fusion All Terrain Ultra. And they've got the same uh, sole as the active yeah. it's just the straps that are different they just offer a bit more security um got the back strap and the front strap and then this is a scoot as well this looks like a trainer that looks like some sort of major hiking boot <laughs> <laughs> and these are both quite so the scoot and this one look much more kind of slim and sporty they're more like a track boot to me <laughs> yeah that, that's, that's pretty much what they are <laughs> okay so which one are we going to try on tizzy um, so I think I'm going to go with the, for endurance, I'm going to go with the flex boot. Okay. Yeah. Feel Let's confident Let's give them a go. <laughs> okay, so now we've decided which boots we're actually going to try on Tizzy. So which ones are these? So these are the flex 115s. Okay, and we're, we're just going to try them on because when you get the new boots on, you're not actually allowed to kind of walk around in them yet, no, are you? No, no, no. We do kind of. Um, that's why we do the fit kit so people can kind of test yeah. them out and make sure they are the correct measurement before we then sell them the boot. So what's the price range from the three boots that we've seen? Okay, so the scoot boots are just the scoot boots by themselves without any kind of pads or any extras. They're 143. Yeah. And then they go slightly up in price to the flex boot, which are 160. 
Um, and then the echo infusions, they are between 185 and 190. Okay, so after not shooing for a couple of rounds, they've kind of paid for themselves. Yes. Yes. Okay, Tizzy, are That's you ready? The they're, they're expensive, like to buy outright. Yes. Um, but then you soon Maybe. save a lot of money because you're not shooing every mm. four to six weeks. She's, she's keen, she's going for them. <laughs> <laughs> All done? Okay, let's have a little go. Okay, then do the right four first. So you just want to keep the gaiters out of the way, just hold them back like that. And then take the foot, and exactly the same with the fit kits, slide them on at the toe, like that, and give them a bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a tap, to make sure they're on nice and secure, there's no big movements, and put them on the floor. Good girl. So then you want to make sure the gaiters are lifted nice and high and then just for now because obviously these boots are new I just do the gaiters up first just like lo loosely like that and then I have a bit of a play with the straps and just see where so we've got two options so we've got this option which is this slot here or the slightly lower one so I think the way our heel bulbs sit, I think it might be a better option to just slightly hut the higher, higher one. So if I do these up first, so they do up the same, so this, so this is the same as this side here. So we'll do them up, so you kind of want to have a bit of a pull, but nothing too tight. And then they'll go on like that. So, so we have just a little play around first, obviously these boots have never been used before. I just want to kind of see where they sit, they're comfortable on it, and then so once these sides are done up, I then have a little play with the gaiters. So it's all a bit of trial and error to start with when setting up your flex boots. That does up exactly the same as it did the sides, a little bit tight to start with, like that. And tuck that in, and I have a little look round. Make sure there's no, no big gaps, want the straps to feel tight and then you want to be able to get a finger around the gaiter strap there. So, so I'm happy with the way they're sat. So now you've watched me put that one on, do you want to have a go with this one? Yeah, Tizzy looks sceptical. <laughs> right. right then, okay. I'll be there to watch you and help. Yeah. <laughs> We go toe first, give it a little tap on, then make sure the gaiter is up and out the way. That feels pretty good to me. Not oh there's barely any movement, I see what you mean like. <laughs> and then fit down, please. Okay. And then you did this Paston strap yeah. first. So I know she's okay. got slightly different hooves. If you kind of aim for the same three as what I've done. And two. Oh, that's quite easy. That yeah, they just kind of pop into play. They're a bit like tendon boots. The yeah. the little clips with tendon boots, aren't they? One, two, three, and two. Okay, so not bad for first go. No, I think that's pretty perfect. <laughs> so my main concern with boots actually yeah. is um, them staying on uh -huh. and kind of looking after them and things and, and making sure that they're on right. So what are kind of your top tips for making sure I put them right so that they stay on um, and I don't lose my boots? Okay, so I think it's probably the main reason why I actually provide a fitting service. Um, just because I've had boots on any of my horses for many, many years. And I just feel personally there's like, you know, there's a lack of actual kind of like visual advice um, you know exactly how that each boot fits that individual horse. You know every horse has got different size pastons, different size feet, yeah. um, and sometimes you need you need to have a bit of a tweak and a play. And it's good to have you know especially me there to you know kind of advise um, what I think personally is best. So the flex boots, I've not I've sold quite a lot of these since they came to the yeah. UK about June time. Um, and I've not yet had a report of any of them falling off. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what you kind of wanted to look for is you just, you know, you just want them more, like, especially the flex boots, you just want like real security. Um, the flex boots with the back strap, and as long as they fit the, the actual hoof capsule well, and the back strap is secure, they 
they just don't really move. Yeah. They, you know, they're so secure. And I know I um, feel much more confident in them in general, yeah. having had someone come in and fit them and see them on her and things. Yeah. Okay, so once I have been for a ride with these on, and presumably, especially in winter, they've got super muddy, what do I do to look after them? How do I wash them down and how do I store them? Okay, so that's the fantastic thing about flex boots. They take about five to ten seconds to wash. <laughs> Just with a hose or oh, a bucket. Awesome. Um, you know, completely rinse them off, including the gaiters. Um, the gaiters, you know, I'd say probably in, you know, if you take them back home, um, they'll probably take ten minutes to dry if yeah. that, ten, fifteen minutes. Um, and then you can store them however you want. Oh, awesome. Yeah, again, they're such fantastic, easy, you know, they don't obviously don't sure. absorb any water. Just them. Um, <laughs> you know, they're just such easy, like stress free, stress free. Like grippers. endurance tech, I like anything you can rinse down with a hose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, most brands of boots come with pads. Um, there's lot, kind of lots of different pads on the market at the moment. My favourite are actually the flex pads. Um, we've got the yellow ones here and these are the soft version. They've just got a slight bit of movement. And these are kind of for horses that have you know, like, got like pathologies, um, laminitis, just had their shoes taken off. And then we've got the red pads, which are the firm pads. They've got just a very, very slight bit of movement. Um, and they're kind of more for established horses that just need a little bit more support. They're so much better, hey Wizzle? <laughs> so she's not had anything at all, no. And she's, been, she's been walking on this. Yeah. And she's been, and she's been a bit like, like oh, this is yeah. very nice. Yeah. Whereas now, I know that her back feet don't have any on, but actually she's not going, oh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. to go anywhere in, <laughs> at speed, don't you? Hey, how does that feel? What do Better? you think, does he? <laughs> no. and I tried them and you as you saw in the footage Tizzy looks super happy she has been a bit foot sore on the stones especially on the drive so I'm really pleased that she was kind of feeling much better so this transition from shoe to barefoot um, is a bit more comfy for her I have one more question and that's based on kind of the longevity of the boots so cost wise for me mm -hmm. I would hope that these would last me for farrier cycles because that's that's kind of comparable to the cost of these versus the cost of shoes yeah so i'm hoping for six months what would you say is the longevity of these boots so i've had my flex boots on my own horse and then i do a lot of hacking over any sorts of terrain mm -hmm. um i'd say i've probably covered anything between 180 and 200 miles okay um obviously i don't do you know <laughs> really long distance yeah. hacking but you know we've done a few like 20 30 40 mile rides um i've had no rubs or anything of you know them not moved um and the soles still actually look brand new oh awesome. so i just wash them off after and then good to go they look. i'll get back to you yeah. guys see how long they last thank you so much for coming no, no to fit problem the boots. At all. um i will let you know how we get on with doing if i have any problems i'll take pictures and yeah and ask no, you for your do. advice yeah. if that's okay yeah no problem also watch this space we're going to do Rachel's first endurance ride next year. <laughs> In flex boots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, no, lovely.